With one hand, we reach back to the tried and tested principles which have dethroned principalities and powers. And with the other, we reach forward to the purpose, the power of God for a new generation. be made whole are you ready is anybody hungry anybody expecting God to move let heaven know with your shout that you're ready tonight let's go Testify, say. There's nothing you can do. Uh-huh. Every word you say.
shake loose a praise in this house that says you love God real big and you got a real big expectation tonight. Come on, beloved, shake it loose, shake it loose, shake it loose. Find yourself some room, move side to side, wave those hands, jump if you need to, get out in the aisle, come up front, but somebody bless him out loud. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Slip out of the grave and break into the wild and don't be afraid. Oh no, let's go and run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you, and death like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Say, wait a Come on up. Yep. i 
Send it up to him, send it up to him, send it up, 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 send it up. Heaven is waiting for you, heaven is waiting for you. Send up a sound that says, Heaven, I'm hungry for you. God, I'm hungry for you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come on, if you're able, hands up all across the room, watching online. Jesus, we testify of your goodness, of your faithfulness, of your kindness. Woo. Yeah, come on. So my needs will be met And you are still my healer No, I can't see it yet Listen, I am still gonna praise you And I won't forget who you are Anybody remember the goodness? 
voice of Jesus, let him know, let him know. Yeah, who you are, yeah. You are still. So my needs will be met. So my needs will be met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. your part right here and I won't forget who you are who you are who you are mighty strong able who you are come on say say you have not
side of the miracle. We can praise you on this side of the miracle. If we can praise you on this side when the healing's taking place, we can go ahead and give you thanks on this side of the healing. I'm gonna watch my God do it again. I'm gonna watch my God do it again. I'm gonna watch my God do it again. He's gonna do it again. I'm gonna watch my God do it again. I'm gonna watch my God do it again. I'm gonna watch my God do it again. He's gonna do it again. Come on, say, say, say. I'm gonna watch my God. I'm gonna wash my guy I'm gonna wash my God He's gonna do it again Come on say that again say say I'm gonna wash my God I'm gonna wash my God I'm gonna wash my God He's gonna do it again He's gonna do it It's your miracle work Yeah 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 your miracle worker. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your miracle worker. Your miracle Come on, faith is rising right now as you praise him from your heart. Come on, faith is rising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, all across the room, way makers. We make miracle work, promise keep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
God is good, amen. I had to catch my breath for a minute. I was having my own personal praise party. Is that all right at prayer cloth? I'm telling you right now, I don't need anybody to pray for me. I'm already made whole. I'm already made whole. I'm not waiting on my miracle. It's here. It's here. No more miracle in the making. It's here. Amen. Remain standing if you would. I'm Ashton Parsley. I'm the first daughter here at World Harvest Church and the proud director of student life at Valor Christian College, the School of the Spirit. And I'm with our beautiful 
wonderful, gracious First Lady, Miss Joni Parsley, who this is probably what, your like 30th prayer cloth or something, right, Pastor? 30 years you've been conducting this service under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to the anniversary. We haven't really mentioned that, you know, publicly or nationally, but you're 62 and breaking through, Pastor. <laughs> you can still punch and kick. <laughs> you look nice tonight. Who picked out your outfit? You helped? We both did. We both did. Aren't you glad? You have a microphone right there. Oh, I <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know if I should talk about that on, on a microphone. It takes so many, it takes a village to get him ready. So. And all the pastor's wives said amen. <laughs> <laughs> but we have the wonderful privilege, first of all, of welcoming you on behalf of the First Family and the World Harvest Church Family. Welcome to Be Made Whole. Prayer Cloth 2019, joining us online all over the world. Over 300,000 prayer requests represented here at this altar. And we know that the anointing is both tangible and transferable. And we are believing for the same miracle manifesting power of the Holy Spirit that is resident in this room to infiltrate wherever you are. It, our, the anointing is not separated by a screen, amen? amen? So whatever it is you're believing for, miracles, signs, wonders, they're coming to your house, yes, amen? amen? Yes, and listen, you still have time to get your prayer requests right here at this altar. You don't wanna miss out. There's information there. Click on the banner, or click on the link in the comments. Get your prayer request in this room, amen? You have anything you'd like to say before you introduce your wonderful husband? <laughs> Introducing him? <laughs> oh, um, well, since I haven't had an opportunity since so many of you are here, um, you are our family, yes. our actual church family and our extended family. Yes. Um, I just wanna take a minute to thank you very, very much for all of your support and prayers flowers, all the things, the emails, all of the things that you did to show your acts of love and kindness and compassion during the passing of my father a few months ago. And um, so I appreciate that so very much because I knew I wasn't alone. And um, I have learned one great truth, well, many through this, but you know, when it's a tough time and you get to the end of the day and said, well, I made it through another day. And um, the Lord showed me this. If we can make it to the morning, there's new mercies awaiting for us. And so I've just been aware of those new mercies and waiting yes. to see what new mercies are going to be afforded to me yes. that day. And he has certainly been that amazing, merciful, compassionate, yes. wonderful father, Abba, yes. to his beloved. So I, I want to thank you for that. It means the world to me. And um, these requests, if you've, I wish you could have an opportunity to read some of these. Um, there is tragedy and hurt and pain and things you can't even imagine. Um, on those, on those cards. Yes. And um, I've, I've read stacks before that gave me a lot of perspective. And yes. I thought, oh, I had it rough until I read a few of those and thought, um, 
Yes, but prayer, prayer is our, our mighty, mighty communication to God. Yes. And um, we're thankful for the opportunity to have so many of us being one voice, yes. one voice Hallelujah. speaking one truth yes. to one God yes. that we serve. And we're waiting for an amazing and a bounding um, miracles and signs and wonders that are going to be taking place. I believe it. We've been praying and fasting and the presence of God is here. Yes. And um, so I will now introduce, after 30 years of doing this, um, and my goodness, I do remember, I do remember a lot of these. Um, they've been very powerful. Yes. And um, what an honor, yes. what an honor to, to do. What, what that says is that they trust and have faith in this house and the man of this house. Yes. And he has proven, and he is what he says he is. Yes. And um, beyond being an um, iconic preacher and pastor, he's um, He's a man of God and a man after God's own heart. Yes. And that's what um, impresses me the most. Well, actually, the best thing about him is he's a wonderful dad. So he's a great dad. So he's a father to many, not only just his family, but a father to many of the sons and daughters that are here tonight. And um, that's the stage she's in now. That's the season to pass on all of the wisdom and years of, of ministry and what it takes to get through and, um, and to not quit. Amen. And that's what Dr. Sumrall wrote a book that said, I did not quit. And, after how many years now? I don't know how many. I, I asked him several times to quit, but he never did. And yes, but it is, I don't even know what he said. What was it? He said, you've asked many times per day sometimes oh. for him to quit. Yeah, there, there have been those times. Oh, goodness. Because the anointing is born out of sacrifice. And we know, as a family, what he sacrificed to carry this anointing. It's a yoke-destroying, burden-removing, devil-defeating, right. cancer-defeating anointing. We, the Parsley family, we are products of prayer cloths. Mm -hmm. This isn't just a gimmick, y'all. This isn't something fun we decided to do someday in a planning meeting. Ask Paul about his handkerchiefs and aprons. Don't try to argue doctrine with me. Mm -hmm. The man with the arguments always at the mercy of the man with the experience. And we've experienced the power of a prayer cloth. When I was only two years old and Austin was handed to Pastor and Miss Joni, and given the autism spectrum disorder diagnosis, they said there's no cure and there's no hope. And my parents, you know the story, they said, well, we, we can get with you on the no cure thing, but on that no hope part, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And they got down in the floorboard of that van coming home from Cleveland Clinic and grabbed a hold of 
a seed and targeted it toward that need and carried a prayer cloth around to every occupational therapy appointment, to every doctor's appointment, to every speech pathology appointment. There's one under your mattress, yes. his mattress. There's one in my book bag and my car. <laughs> I truly believe in that. And um, I still have the last sheet that when Dr. Sumrall was at our home, yeah. that last sheet that he laid upon and I took it. And well, first of all, I put Austin in it and we slept in that bed that night. Yeah. I was gonna roll around in that anointing. So, Amen. I mean, <laughs> Amen. and uh, I still have that and I cut it in pieces and shared it with people. And um, it's, you know, I truly believe in prayer cloth. I have seen it work yes. and um, it really is a wonderful thing to have a tangible yes. touch and it's something that represents such a strong anointing and yes. the power of God and um, what he wants to do for his children, which is yes. just born out of his true love for us. Yes. So. Amen. You do way better than I do with this. So. She does wonderful. I just... <laughs> she... So... I'm so proud of this one. <laughs> Thank you. So proud of her. So, the next voice you will hear is a voice of a man speaking over vocal cords that were once ridden with cancer. But now, the cancer is no more. And he'll mount this pulpit tonight with a seven times greater anointing. He's got a word for us. And we're ready to receive it and we're ready to receive him. Would you welcome the host of Be Made Whole, our pastor, Dr. Rod Parsley. If you're comfortable, would you just take the hand of the person next to you, get across the aisles if you can. Church buildings are kind of constructed to divide us one from another. And if there's ever a time that we needed the power of God and the power of agreement where one chases a thousand, but two puts 10,000 to flight, it would be a designated time like this. A time when we have notified every principality and every power a time when we have set hell on notice a time when every sickness and disease every pain and malady every malfunction and infirmity has knees smiting one against the other i did not come to play let god be exalted let his enemies be scattered we did not come to negotiate terms at the table of cancer and leukemia. We came to enforce the boundaries of this kingdom. We came to declare and decree thy kingdom come here now. As it is in heaven, hell is a squatter. And tonight, hell gets his eviction notice. Serve notice on every spirit of depression, every spirit of bondage. Darren, I need your wife right now. Come, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. You tormenting, binding spirit of grief. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You have lost nothing, daughter. You have gained everything. Do not let those that would cause tears of regret and tears of sorrow and tears of hurt and tears of pain to stain your pillow. I want your tears of praise, says the Most High. And so tonight, I turn it right side up again. 
I wish somebody would get an agreement with me, that's all. Ah. Come on, shout that depression spirit out of you. Ah. I rebuke cancer. I command every cancer cell. You are foreign. You are a trespasser. Our bodies were not made for fornication and they were not designed for cancer. You are a trespasser. Let me teach you something never to forget. Stay in that attitude. Don't stop. Don't do this. Come on, get your praise up. The atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground of your miracle. Are you expecting somebody, somebody somewhere, somehow understands that tonight the tumor comes out, the ringing in your ears stops, that lump under your breast disappears, that cough leaves you to never return again, that back pain is being adjusted now. Come on, get your praise up. Or go walk around the hallway till you find one. already healed you your heart's been beating all day long people say personally why do you shout I shout because I can what's your problem God's spirit is swirling right back here. Anything you want, reach out and grab it. Everybody shout and point your hands over this direction. Sir, notice on the devil, you can't stay. You can't stay. You can't stay. You can't stay. I bind paralysis. I paralyze paralysis in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Move those arthritic knees. Move them in his presence. Somebody clap. There's an anointing on clap. I heard you. He said, keep clapping. Arthritis is leaving. You serve a notice on that infirmity. I'm going to tell you why you, while you're clapping what I wanted to tell you a moment ago. You don't pray cancer out. You do not pray cancer out. No. Cancer has a spirit attached to it. Yes. Now in the name of Jesus. Cast it out! You divorce devil! Bow your knee! That's right! Bow your knee! I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every home, every marriage, every family. You will obey me! Bow your knees. Oh, I need somebody to shout a minute.
She's showing you how you're going to be able to move when you press in. Running is the language of freedom. You can't run when you're bound. You can't run when you're chained. You can't run when the devil's got a hold of your chain. everything coming against your eyes from dry eyes to cataracts I, 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 I command that retina to be healed I command the effect of sugar diabetes on your eyes yep, yep, yep. to lose its hold on you I rebuke glaucoma I command you see now are disappearing. Rashes are disappearing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Children tormented with rashes will sleep in peace this night. Every child and every adult affected in this place by the imposition of a demonized person out for their own sexual gratification driven by demon spirits, I lose you now by the power of God. I command you by the blood of Jesus. Every memory is gone. Every bondage is gone. Don't you tell your spouse, well, I'm this way because I was abused. Everybody take a dip and come back up shouting free. And he wants to start with you right now. Lift up that language. Prove your say. Let every devil know you're full of the Holy Ghost and you're not leaving here without your miracle. Shoulders are being loose. Go ahead. Yeah. Stand there and act like you don't need it if that's... God said for us to laugh at brain tumors right now. Laugh. Laugh. Satan's kingdom is not going to be defeated. It is defeated. It is defeated. Now. There. You, no, you, if I point at you, everybody see me, if I point at you, do not do this. As if God doesn't want to set you free. 
If I point in your direction, climb over three pews, knock seven people out of your way, and shout, it's my time for my thing from my God. Cause you can miss that mess right now. You can miss that mess right now. Right now. So get the shout. Get the clapping. Get the spinning. I need some spinners. very precious thing. It is made out of valuable metal, jewels. It's a never-ending circle. It indicates the continuing love of God. Did you say I do? Yes, sir. Did you say I do? Yes, sir. Take this ring. Put it on her hand and say this to her. Devil, you are a liar. Devil, you a liar. You ain't taking my home. You're not taking our marriage. We come against every lie. We forgive every shortcoming. We start over tonight, right here, right now. We are made new. Our marriage is made whole. Now kiss her while we shout. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Uh, Y'all gonna have a good night tonight, but we're gonna get through the service first. God has done a miracle for you. Let him do it. Don't you ever bring up anything that happened before what happened right now. I don't care what it was. I said, I don't care what it was. You understand me? Touch them, God. Keep them strong. Yes. Keep them strong. Yes. Keep them strong. Yes. Keep them strong, my king. Keep them strong, God. That's right. That's right. Now everybody shout. dancing music. Everybody dance with your spouse. Stop! 
Oh, dear Lord, I haven't felt this since raised the standard. I, I just got hit with anointing to tell the devil to put your money back. Go tell 12 people, I'm getting my money back. I said, go tell somebody, I'm getting my money back. Y'all be seated. I'm gonna take a minute. Be seated. Well, don't let me stop you from blessing him. You bless him and you run and I can preach over top of you run and I, I can preach over top of you shouting. I can preach over top of you waving and clapping and spinning and dancing. Church is entirely too quiet in the way. shout every sickness out of your life right now you just gotta get desperate enough you're not desperate enough yet you still depending on your pills and your psychiatrist and your doctor when you 
Did you see me hit that nerve? Did you feel it? Did you feel it? I said it. You didn't pay my way. You're backslidden. How do I know where to go to church? I just don't know. Who's got the best light show? Who's got the best preacher telling jokes? Who's got the preacher know the best business plan? Who got the best light show? Who got the shortest service? Who got, here's the worst one of all, who got the most people? Preachers never talk about how many they're getting saved. They just talk about how many they adopted from somebody else. I'm not playing. Don't you come slithering in here with your user-friendly backslidden self. We got a cross here. You can get right. You can get right. Can't stay with their wives. Can't pay their bills. But they sure can preach. You're backslidden. I'm fellowshipping with that mess. If it has to be me and Joni and Ashton and Austin, we'll be holy. We won't sell out. I'm 62 years old. I've come too far to turn back now. I know what got me here. How do you know where to go to church? You ought to take this survey where you attend church or where you try to pastor. Where do we, how do we know where to go to church? Are y'all listening? You go to church where God has chosen to place his name there. God dangled the preposition, not me. That's what the word said. Where God has placed his name there. He did not say where some committee of men decided after surveying the incomes of the locale. I wish I had one person tell me anymore, God told me to build a church there. Instead of showing me their demographics. I don't know why this is on me right now, but it is. And I'm not going to shake it off. I'm not going to preach for you like some kind of trained seal. I'm going to tell you the truth. How do I know where God placed his name? Mark chapter 16, unless you have a trick Bible. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Okay, we're going to get rid of 75% right now. They cast out devils. If your pastor hadn't laid his hands on somebody in church and had everybody scream, come out, y'all backslid.
Well, we do that in the counseling session. That's your problem. You've replaced the Holy Ghost with counseling. You've replaced healing with doctors. And you've replaced deliverance with Alcoholics Anonymous. And that's not what we are here to offer you tonight. We're not here to offer you a 20-step program. Uh -huh. We're here to offer you the saving, delivering, healing power of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In an instant. Be seated. Cast out devils. Yes. You don't pray devils out, you cast them out. Number two, here goes another 50%. They speak with other tongues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but we do that in our home meetings. Really? What? You gonna scare God off? I had a crazy preacher. You know some preachers are crazy. I had a crazy preacher tell me, well, we do not allow speaking in other, do they want me to come preach for them? I said, nope. I got a place to preach. He said to me, imagine, you might say that to some folk, but say that to me. He said, we don't speak in other tongues publicly in our service because we don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. And the living Christ is my witness. I said, do you own a Bible? He said, what do you mean? I said, tongues are not for a sign to believers, but to unbelievers. You taking their sign away. Afraid we'll offend somebody. Make somebody nervous. You and the devil. I have a new sermon series. It's called, Don't Go to Church. I used to pray that people would go to church. Now I pray they don't. I've seen what they get when they get there. A false gospel. If you have word without miracle, you have vain religion. If you have miracle without word, you have raw emotionalism. God intends you to preach the word and then show forth the signs of it when you're done, not hurt them out so you can get them back in. I'm always fixing preachers. Samuel, Samuel's message was moral. It had power because he was what he said. All of Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was anointed a prophet of God for God let none of his words fall to the ground. God revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh. We must be intentional about rushing back to the altar again and pleading for souls. We must have the Holy Spirit in manifestation instead of a click track in our ears.
Now then, I wish I had time to preach, but I don't want to take time from Vani and Pastor William McDowell. But I'm burning up. I will tell you I'm burning up to reveal to a nation and to the world and to the church the God they think they know. I had a little thing put together for tonight called to be or not to be made whole. Those words that first dripped out of Shakespeare's pen and then from Hamlet's mouth. To be or not to be. At some point, you've got to get passionate about the pursuit for what you want from God. Because you can have all of it you're willing to pay for and none of it you're not willing to pay for. Yeah. <laughs> Just scribble this down somewhere. Scribble this down. Desperation is better than despair. <laughs> Desperation is better than despair. Are you desperate or are you in despair? Despair gets buried. Desperation leads to resurrection. There comes a time when you must decide whether you will continue in your despair or you will be resurrected from your desperation. Most folks have forgotten Vietnam. I remember it well. I'm old enough to remember it. I remember part of the 50s, all of the 60s, the 70s and the 80s, the 90s and the 2000s and the 2010s. And now we're heading into the 2020s. I've been around a day or two and I remember what it was like to open up the local newspaper and see the count of the dead and the pictures of the fallen every day. What most people do not remember or possibly never knew concerning Vietnam is this, that the French bled and died there in Indochina before we did. Did anybody go to history class? The great French empire met its demise in Indochina. It began first in Algeria and then like dominoes, they looked up and that massive, wealthy, best fighting troops in the world, best equipment in the world fell prey to Hanoi. They gathered the French up, the French that had just met their corregidor, the French that had just met their baton. They lined up the generals and the colonels and the leaders of that great French legion and they made them march through the rice paddies of Indochina all the way to Hanoi. There was among them a French surgeon. He fell under the attack of appendicitis, 120 degree temperatures, insects of every kind, diseased, 
debilitated on a death march. And right in the middle of it, double over with an attack of appendicitis. His despair turned to desperation. What am I going to do? He took the only surgical instrument he had in his little backpack, a razor. And there in that filth and heat, he removed the offending organ. He pulled filthy strands from his uniform and made thread to sew his own self-inflicted but life-giving wound. I said life-giving wound. back together. It reminds me of a little woman in your Bible. She had spent everything she had. She'd been to every physician in town but could not get better but rather grew worse. Some run to the doctor Every time their child has got the sniffles and they begin shoving antibiotics into their little mouths until their stomachs are bloated with antibiotics and they're still burning up with a fever and we are too unintelligent to discern it is the antibiotic that is giving fuel to the fever. You say, well, you sound like you're against doctors. I thank God for doctors. But I'm ready to get back to the gospel. Y'all talk about legacy all the time. My pastor never took so much as an aspirin tablet in over 70 years of his life. Here's what I believe. We despair, therefore we turn to everything except becoming desperate for a touch of the hem of his garment. We spend more time making doctor's appointments and visiting pharmacies than we do on our knees fasting. You're not shouting me down now, but I'm helping you. I didn't tell you to quit taking your medicine. You better not. I've seen your faith. You better not. But I can tell you there's a better way. Do you know the symbol for pharmacy? Do you, you know? It's a pole with a snake wrapped around each side of it. Do you know what that was originally the symbol of? Poison. We are poisoning ourselves. We got to take a pill to go to bed and a pill to get up and a pill to get us through the day. But we believe God's going to take us from earth to heaven. But he can't get us delivered. Now don't get mad at me. I'm not condemning you, I'm just showing you a better way. I've led folks through Alcoholics Anonymous more times than I can tell you. We operate it right here in this church, but I'll tell you what I'm believing for. I'm believing for the day that all they gotta do is stagger in the back door and get in the glory. Stand up here and get another dose. Stand up here. Deliverance, healing, miracles. A, a pastor, can you come? Can you come, Pastor McDowell? Can you come? I want you to lay hands on this young man. 
right when right when I looked at him I saw crusades and I saw wheelchairs empty and I saw blind eyes open lay your hands on him if you want it I'm not prophesying to him I'm prophesying through him take it Touch your neighbor and say, you got to get desperate. You got to get desperate. Got to get desperate. Got to get desperate. Got to get it. Got to get it. Got to get it. Got to get it. Got to get desperate. Everybody up. Everybody up. Everybody up. Everybody up. Everybody up. Everybody up. Shout. Shout. Clap! Take control of the atmosphere right now. We bind every doubt. We bind every spirit of unbelief. People come into church with all kinds of spirits. I bind every spirit but the Holy Spirit. I lose the spirit of desperation on the people of God that say I've got to touch the hem of his garment and I shall be made. Stay where you are. One more thing. One more thing. Oh God, I... I'm going to have a revival in my own church where I preach for about a month every night. Maybe I can get some of this out of me. How desperate are you? We often worship our worship. We're not worshiping out of desperation. We're worshiping out of a spirit of entertainment. God help us. God wants to raise up an army. Okay, that went over big. Look, I've just come to the conclusion that a former University of Tennessee football coach came to. I've just decided if they're going to run me out of town, I'm going to put a smile on my face and act like I'm leading a parade. The book is right and they are wrong and it's time for us to stand up. Legacy. Legacy. What's your first thought at the sign of your everyday headache? Advil? Tylenol? Help us, sir. What do you do when you can't sleep? Run for the sleep medication? Or run for the songs? Or maybe hit your knees in prayer because God wants you up after all. Ooh. Mm. Don't settle for despair. Despair will get you buried. Decide tonight to be. That surgeon decided to be. He made it to Hanoi, and he made it out of Vietnam, became one of the most noted surgeons of all time in the streets of Paris, France, because he decided to be. Why have you made up your mind to be sick? Why have you settled to be depressed? Keep going to your doctors and you may be none the better. Or you could believe God with every single inch of your faith 
and watch God's mighty right hand come down and deliver you in an instant. I've helped hundreds through Alcoholics Anonymous, but I also remember my Uncle Willie. 35 years a helpless, hopeless alcoholic, not one day sober, the only member of our entire extended family that wasn't born again. Until one night, he showed up at church as drunk as a badger, however drunk a badger gets, waddling and swearing, smelling of alcohol. I told two ushers, go get him, sit him on the second row. One of you hold him like this, the other one hold him like that. I feel God coming. I said, I feel God coming. Hallelujah. About halfway through that night, the sermon was enough is enough. And before I knew it, my little 98 pound emaciated uncle, that had been being held up by the ushers, pointed a little bony finger up in the air and started saying, enough is enough. Despair gave way to desperation. He said, I gotta press through this thing. I did not come here to die. And in a moment, in an instant, God ripped that bottle out of his hand and he spent the next 20 years without taking a drop. Churches need to start looking for miracle and not medicine. I need somebody to agree with me right now. We want God to do signs and wonders, but we make every excuse in the world for him not doing it. Come on, Bonnie. I gotta get out the way. I'm desperate. Desperate. I'm desperate for souls. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. Hundreds are coming into the kingdom right now. The great apostle, prophet, and mentor of mine, the late great Leonard Ravenhill, made this statement 1969. I seriously doubt that 50, that 5%, that 5% of the people attending our churches are truly saved. You're not saved because you go to church. Maybe you just like the fellowship. Maybe you just like the party. Maybe you just like another social event. Maybe you're looking for a spouse. I don't know why you go to church, but I know you're no more a Christian because you go to church than you're a car because you walk through your garage. Good, sir. And I'm not talking about the decision. We don't ask people to make a decision. A decision is what you make when you want a Big Mac or a quarter pounder. That's a conclusion based on evidence. You make a decision. It's a good place to start, but you're not saved because you made a decision. Stop saying, I have decided to follow Jesus. Because a decision will never keep you there. You got to take the next step. You got to make a confession. That's when you pull up to the little squawk box at McDonald's and tell them what you want. And they say, thank you for your order. That'll be 1592, but you're still not saved. You're not, you're not full, are you? When you confess your order. Right, right, right. It's not just about a decision. It's not about a confession. Peter confessed Jesus and 13 chapters later was still not converted. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you and you are no longer Simon, but Peter. Then Jesus went his way and everybody said Peter was fine. 
except he shows up 13 chapters later at the triclinium when Christ is about to be crucified and Jesus looks across the table at him and says, Simon, I thought he called him Peter. Simon, when you are converted, I just helped somebody. There are folks here tonight, you've never really been converted. You've made a decision and that's good. You may have made a confession and that's good, but you don't have the full assurance that if in the next 30 seconds, Jesus should require your soul that you're as sure for heaven as if you were already there. There's something between you and God and tonight you wanna get it taken care of. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around in obedience to the Holy Spirit. There is but one choice, heaven or hell, God or Satan, life or death, blessing or cursing. And God says, choose life. You can do that tonight. You can do that tonight. You can pillow your head knowing you're on your way to heaven. In fact, your Bible says in this healing meeting, don't fear him who can kill your body but rather who can cast your soul into hell. Uh -huh. Hell is real. I don't care what your modernist preacher told you. If you go there, you'll be an intruder on Satan and his angels right. forever. Right. But I'm believing that every person in this room is not only going to heaven, as we all will, but that everyone in this room gets to stay. If you're unsure right now, when I say three, shoot that hand up in the air. We're going to pray. God will do exactly what we ask him to do. Don't wait for anyone. Eternity waits for no one. This time tomorrow, I may be in heaven and you may be in hell. I pray not. Here's your opportunity. This is it. If any man be in Christ, all things are passed away. If all you're doing is trying to be a better person by going to church, you need to be converted. This is your opportunity. On three, shoot that hand up in the air and let's pray. One, two, three. Leave it up. Don't put it down for any reason. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thir
Not sure whose idea it was to bring the private up after the general, but um, wow. Have you already received? I said, have you already received? Can you turn me up in the monitors a little bit, bud? You are great. You're doing miracles so great. Yes, yes, yes. And there's no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You're doing miracles so great. And I've looked around and I can't find no one else. There is no one else. Nobody else like you. Mm. You are great. You're doing miracles so great. And there's no, 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 nobody like you. And I can't find nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. <laughs> nobody else could feel me. Mm -mm. Nobody else could heal me. Nobody else could reach that far down to where I was. Nobody else could love a wretch like me. Nobody else could believe in a wretch like me. When everybody else gave up on me, he said, daughter, I'll pick you up. I'll pick you up. I'll brush you off. I'll presence, Lord. Mm. 
Fill this place with your glory. And do what only you can do. You may be seated. just working give honor to pastor Miss Joni Ashton in Austin and to have my family with me and my friends means everything argued with the Lord I wanted to uh, do a shout message because I'm comfortable with shout okay. didn't want to expose myself that's for sure wanted to come in here great and mighty amen and God said no it's time to take the mask off because <laughs> that's a little bit of what's wrong with church is everybody just running around acting like everything's all right. We've learned how to patty cake for Jesus. Well, at least in Louisiana. I don't know about y'all, but we've learned how to patty cake for Jesus. And how are you good? Amen. Now, I don't want to hear all your problems. Don't get me wrong. I want you to say good. Amen. Come on, tap your neighbor and say it's going to be all right. So it, it, it's going to be a little raw for me, a little rough for me, but I'm going to obey the voice of the Lord. I won't, um, I won't read it if, if, if you'll trust me that I'm in the Bible. Will y'all do that? And you can read it when you get home. <laughs> in Genesis chapter 11, we read the story of Terah. Terah is Abraham's father. And we often hear the axiom, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Anybody? Well, Terah is that Abraham's daddy. And Terah had three sons, Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And it kind of sounds like they're having a pretty good life there in Ur of the Chaldees. And Haran was the firstborn, and he is also the father of Lot. Abraham and Sarah get married. Nahor and Milcah get married. And it just kind of sounds like everything is going along as planned. And three boys, you know, ah, we're going to have grandkids to play with soon. That's what every parent looks forward to. And they're living in one of the greatest cities of the time. And no doubt... Tara's expectations were high. Wow, honey, think of all we can get done with three boys. Not one, but three. But as life has a way of doing, through we find out in Scripture that his firstborn, Haran, dies. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on just a minute, God. Um, you gave me three. Okay. Uh, now there's two. That, I, I, that's not what I was expecting. Um, why would you give just to take? Mm, you, you see, what I came to talk to you about just for a minute is... It's the things that you never saw coming that will break you down. It's the things that we never anticipated that can get you questioning your faith. 
You see, it's that unexpected struggle. It's that unplanned injury. It's that unanticipated sickness or diagnosis. It's that unforeseen loss. It's that storm, that hurricane that never showed up on the radar. But hold on a minute, God. I, I had plans for that boy. Mm -hmm. I had high expectations for him. Yeah, 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 Tara. It's those unrealized unexpectations that will cut you so deep. They can change who you are. And scripture says that Heron died in the presence of his father, Tara. Hmm. Now every parent tried to imagine holding that boy, just holding the ghost of hope lost at this point. And the text says, though, that at some point after he lost his boy, Tara made the decision, Pastor, to move on. So he gathered what was left of his family, uh, Abram and, and Sarah and Lot, who was Haran's son and his wife, and they headed to, are you ready for it, Canaan. You, you, your only way to promise. So the, the scripture says they went forth together to go into the land of Canaan, but, but, mm, but, 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 but they came to a place called Haran, huh, and they settled there. Haran, um, that sounds vaguely familiar. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, right. That is the name of that which you lost. Okay. Okay, that's the name of the grief that you bear. Oh, that's, that's the name of that which caused you to question your faith. Okay, okay. We stop there. Okay, I get it. Okay. The Bible says that eventually Abraham hears and obeys the voice of God and Lot and his wife, and they eventually leave Haran, headed for the land of promise. They're headed towards Canaan, but not Tara. Mm -mm. Tara decided to stay. He stopped, then he settled mm -hmm, in a place that reminded him of what he lost. Mm -mm -mm -mm. He decided to take up residence, oh Jesus, in the place of pain. Instead of continuing on the journey to promise, he said, you know what, you know what, I've been hurt just a little bit too bad, and, and there's something about this place right here that's kind of become comfortable to me. Ha has anybody ever got comfortable in your pain? Oh, oh we don't, we don't want to, y'all want to play church tonight? We can do that. And, and so, reading it, and I started thinking, you know what? I get it. <laughs> I get it, Tara. I, um, I know what that feels like, that unexpected loss. Yeah. I still remember waking up that morning um, expecting a normal, ordinary, good day. And... Um, Family and I went to town. It was just like every other ordinary day. Um, and, and, and we were going to go meet daddy for lunch. And as usual, we're kind of waiting on daddy. So, so we get a phone call. Um, and, I, and my husband answered it. And I, I said, oh, it's probably just daddy telling us where to meet him for lunch. But I could tell by his reaction that um, it wasn't a normal phone call. And he just said, uh, something's wrong with your dad. Jimmy's having a hard time waking him up. So we're not going to go to lunch. We're going to go back out to the farm, which is daddy's house. And I didn't need any other words. His face told me all I needed to know. And just like that, daddy was gone. My world, my rock, no warning. No nudge from God, hey, prepare, 
It's a big storm coming. <laughs> Just gone. Unexpected loss. No goodbye. No, no, no extra minute. Just, just a minute. Just, just 60 seconds. No extra minute to say all the things that I always wanted to tell him, but had too much pride. Just gone. Just gone. Unforeseen devastation. I get it, Tara. Expectations that will never be realized. I get it. Tara, if you're here today, I want you to know, I get it, Tara. You lost, and you lost big. And the loss was so deep that the impact literally takes your breath and it shakes your balance. Where you were steady yesterday, you're faltering today, I get it. It's profound. It is cavernous. It is unfathomable. It is bottomless. The tears are hot and they steam down your face for a while, but then the anger takes its place. Can we be real? And then the questions. Oh yeah, I was one of those that said I would never question God. But I found myself in that house that day. Just, I, I, I still believe. I still believe, but why? God, what do I do now? Oh, well, 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 we'll be happy to tell you why your father's still laying there in the corner. We live in the country. Hasn't come to get him yet. The bishop's going to call you into daddy's office and reveal a letter that daddy wrote. Upon my untimely death, it's my desire, because I heard from God that my daughter Vani and her husband Aaron would pastor the church. Really? <laughs> Can we get him to the funeral home yet first? Okay, 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 okay. Um, onward, soldiers. March forward, always forward, always forward. Come on, lead the people, be strong, be brave, be courageous. Um, oh, okay, daddy, I will. Okay, 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 I will. And I did, I did, I did on the outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but the soul of me, the soul of me, I never missed the church. But the soul of me became so tangled and so entwined in this deep, unrelenting pain. I smiled and said, God bless you. I played the part. I didn't cry at the funeral. I patted everybody on the back and said, we're going to be all right. Oh, don't you worry. We're here now. But then, oh, but then night would fall. Mm. And the sorrow would suck me back into the darkness. But can I tell you, I was, I was on my way to promise. Trying to get there like everybody else. I, I promise. I, that was my plan. Those, those were my plans. I really did, but it was on a weak, vulnerable day. I looked up and I saw a sign and it said, welcome to Haran, a place called Hertzville. Stay as long as you like. Uh, thank you, uh, Hertzville. Thank you, um, Mayor, for the invite. But the family and I, we're on our way to promise. <laughs> we're on our way to promise. We should keep going. Um, you see, we have these possibilities in front of us. We were just handed, on top of my dad's deathbed, we were handed a pristine legacy and a heritage. Um, and, and all we have to do is just walk in it. So, um, and then I hear the voices, keep going, Vani, keep going, keep going. Promise, promise and purpose is just ahead. But I was, I, 
got tired. Um, and that pain had turned into a darkness that I had never encountered before. And um, it became kind of hard to focus. Uh, I was like, hey guys, AJ, Lynn's son, um, mama's tired today. I try to be the strong one. I try to be the glue that keeps us all together, but mom's tired today. Can, can we just stop? I can't journey anymore. Can we just stop here in Hurtsville for a minute? Can you listen to me for a minute? It's not a sin to get tired. It's not a sin to need a rest. And it's not a crime to need to stop. But please, I'm begging somebody in here today, don't stop in Hurtsville. I'm just talking to maybe one person that can hear me today. Maybe you're online, you're not even present. I'm talking to somebody. You're on your way to promise and life was looking good. And I understand that life threw you a curveball. I understand that the unexpected happened, that the unplanned, the loss, the betrayal, the failure, the storm, the wound, the rejection and the damage. I get it. And you try to go on, you really do, but you got tired and the grief took your strength. I just came to tell you, I get it. But don't stop in Hurtsville. Because I came to tell you that it matters where you stop in pain. I, I, I cannot say it again because I want to make sure you get it. It matters where you stop in pain. It, it matters whose house you go to when you're hurt. I, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. It matters what group you choose to surround yourself with when you're dealing with church hurt, when you're dealing with grief, when you're dealing with loss, when you're dealing with question. It matters what we do with our pain. You got tired and maybe you stopped in the wrong spot. Mm. You stopped in that place that had memories, right? You stopped in that place that has a past and that past has a name. You stopped in that place that has old feelings and, and, and brings up old hurt and old, old emotion. And maybe you were looking for closure, but can I tell you, you don't find closure in Hurtsville. You stop to catch your breath, but then eventually you settle. Settle is when you stop but stay too long. Settle is when uh, uh, you know you were born for more. And you know God's got more, but you, you don't feel like you have the strength or the energy to get there. So you just kind of lay down and you settle into the pain. And suddenly you wake up one day and the pain has become familiar. And maybe, maybe, maybe this is your testimony. I don't know. But maybe it takes alcohol to cover the pain. And maybe it takes drugs to cover the pain. And maybe it takes illicit sex to cover the pain. But I I came to tell somebody, here's the thing about Hurtsville. When you stay too long, you'll start talking like them. You stay too long, you'll start thinking like them. You stay too long, you'll start sounding like them. Let me give you some revelation that I received. You weren't bound when you got to Hurtsville. Look at your neighbor and say, you weren't bound. Mm -mm. but you stayed too long and you started getting used to the environment but I came to tell somebody who needs to hear it that God is the same God he was before you settled 
the truth that you knew before you stopped in Hurtsville is the same truth right now. And God's plan for your life didn't change just because you stopped in Hurtsville. But here's the thing about depression. It's tricky. The devil means it that way. It's something that makes the heart sick. And it breeds addiction of every size and color and form. But it also breeds lies. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't expecting even three amens on that because... We like to think that it's just something that we need pills for, but I came to tell somebody it's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing. And part of it are the lies that you begin to believe once you start suffering, once you start grieving. The devil wants you to think, oh my God. Mm -hmm. But here, here's the deal. Most of us, we, we just die a little bit at a time. Just a little at a time. And that's what makes it so dangerous. You see, if Tara had been carrying on and hollering and shouting, I'm depressed. I don't feel like living. I, I just want to stay here in Heron because it reminds me of that boy that I lost. I'm tired of living. If he had been carrying on like that, surely, surely Abraham would have said, no, 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 daddy. No, no, no. We're not leaving you. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. We're going. But my guess is that's not, that's not how it happened. It probably happened just like it happens in my life and how it happens in your life. It's just a little at a time. It just starts chipping. Mm -hmm. And you see, we all know about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But could it have been? The God of Terah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Could it have, could it have been? But grief-stricken Terah stayed just too long in Hurtsville. Could the story of Terah have been any different? And, and really, I came to ask you, what about your story? What about your story? What will your story be? Will you be the girl, the woman, the boy, the man who stopped in Hurtsville and stayed too long? Will you be remembered as the guy or the girl with promise, but you traded your promise and you traded your purpose for the bondage of pain? See, I came up in here believing, help me, Wendell. I came in here believing that somebody is ready for deliverance. I came in here with prayer and fasting, believing that somebody came here to be delivered. Your soul's been captive too long. And you woke up this morning and you said, I'm tired of Hurtsville. Can I talk to you from my heart for a minute? Deliverance comes. Are you ready for it? Because it's deep. Deliverance comes when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Oh, you want a revelation? All right, well, I'll give it to you. Deliverance happens when you look around and you start doing inventory of your life. Hold on, Abraham. A Abraham, A Abraham, where are you? Oh, oh, Tara, he's, he's going on to promise. What? Sarah, where's Sarah? She, she's going on to promise. Whew. Yeah, yeah, but we all stopped. Yeah, yeah, but they heard the voice of God say, it's time to get up and go. And, and, and so they obeyed the voice of God. Can I tell you something personal? When I got up one morning and I looked around and I started doing inventory, when I realized that I had stayed in pain, that I had settled for pain, when I looked around and said, hey, 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 where's my husband? And somebody said, he's out there pastoring the church. 
Oh, oh, that was only just for me, I guess, and I'll receive it. When I asked, where's my children, Pastor? And they said, AJ and Lindsay, they've gone on to promise. And I said, wait a minute. We all stopped in Hertzville. And they said, but they heard the voice of God saying it's time to get up. It's time to move on to promise. When I took inventory, I looked around and I did something very spiritual. Sis, I said, I'm making a decision. I'm not staying here. I'm coming out to hell or high water. I'm not staying here. I'm not living like this. I became desperate. He preached my message this morning and he preached it again tonight. So I thought of just sitting there and worshiping, but I thought, no, I'm going to go ahead and confirm the word. I began to scratch and claw and crawl my way out. Somebody said, why didn't you just walk out? Because I was too low down. Oh, y'all don't want it real talk. Y'all just want a patty cake. I said, because I was too low down. I had a claw. I had a scratch. I had to fight my way out. No, it wasn't easy, but I got out. When I made a decision, I'm coming out of Hurtsville. I've been too long in Hurtsville. Here's what I came to tell you. I may be late getting to promise, but I'm here. I may be late getting to world harvest, but I'm here. Oh, the devil don't like it when we get cocky about it, but I'm here to serve notice to hell, devil, and all his imps and all the haters. I'm late, but I made it. I got scars, but I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. Somebody wants deliverance. You know what it looks like? It looks a whole lot like a decision. Can you tell your neighbor? Say it looks a whole lot like a decision. Yes, deliverance is spiritual, but it's not all spiritual. Because God will break your chains in an instant. In an instant. And then my question to you is, what are you going to do? Oh, 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 okay. Now it requires participation. I thought y'all was just going to pray for me and just put a prayer cloth on me and I was going to be different. Yeah, you will be different. But guess what? What are you going to do after the chain falls off? You're going to lay there in molly grub. You're going to lay there in the hog pen. You're going to lay there and wallow around in the hog slop. Deliverance looks a whole lot like, what did I do? Get that hog slop out for me. I'm better than this. I'm born for more. I'm getting up out of here. I'm getting up. Somebody make a decision. I'm getting up out of here. Hey, who am I talking to? There's a difference in despair and desperation. It was already there. The woman with the issue of blood, where are you going? Woman with the issue, where are you going? We've already told you what to do. Take your issue and go home and learn to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And you know who told her that? The church. Yeah. Take your issue and go home because you're not going to fit on no committees around here. You're not going to be no ladies auxiliary president around here. Not with that thing that you got. 
So they labeled her. So they put a label on her. She had to announce to everybody, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. Everybody run from me. Anybody ever felt like that when you come in church? You didn't even have to say it. The look said it all. Ooh. You ever showed up to convocation or, or some kind of district service? Or, but Oh my God. I done got off my notes. And they looked down their nose at you and said, what are you doing here? Desperation looks different than despair. Despair says, oh, why me? Despair says, oh, y'all just don't know what they did to me. Oh, y'all don't know how they hurt me. Oh, y'all don't know what they call me, Pastor. You, they don't know. You don't know. I know, baby. You're the only one that's ever been through it. I know. I know. <laughs> You're the only one ever lost somebody. I know. You're the only one that's ever been cheated on. I know. I know. I know. You're the only one that's ever, ever lost something dear to you. Oh, my God. The question tonight is, will you be made whole? Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. The question is, will you be made whole? Because the chains are just about to fall. I, I'm warning you right now. They're about to fall. And my question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to be like the woman with the issue? But excuse me. Excuse me. I, I'm not even saying unclean. I don't receive the label that you Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I don't care what you call me. I don't care how you talk about me. I don't care if you put me out. But what I need don't come from you. It comes from him. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I got to get to Jesus. I got to get to Jesus. Oh, my God. How desperate are you? How desperate are you? Desperation says, I don't care what I got to do to get there. I got to get there. I got to get to Jesus. Who's desperate? No, 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 no. Desperation's not cute. Desperation is ugly. I I'll just sit right here and wait. We're, we're waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see any desperate people yet. You're still worried about what they're gonna say about you. That's not desperation. That's despair. I need to know who's desperate tonight. Then what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Come on while the waters are troubled. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. If the singers are around, we just go sing one song. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's still some more of y'all out there. Don't stay in Hurtsville. Don't, don't settle in despair when your deliverance is right here. There is power in the name of Jesus. It'll break every chain. It'll break every chain. It'll break every chain. It'll break every chain. Lord, break every chain. Break every chain. Lord, break every, 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 every chain. There is power ooh, in the name of Jesus. Mm, if you believe it, raise those hands and begin to receive it right now. There is power and it's in the name of Jesus. Come on and speak the name. Demons tremble when you say the name. The atmosphere has to change when you speak the name. 
There's salvation in no other name. I need you to open up your mouth and just start screaming, Jesus. I need you. I'm not going home the same way. I'm not going back the same way. I don't care if they talk about me. I don't care what they call me. I don't care if they put me out. My power is not in man. My destiny is not in man. But I believe. I believe. You There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, I want you to begin to declare that over your life. Say it. There is power. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Come on, I want hell to hear you. Where is it at? And what can it do? What can it do? Come on and shout it. I don't care if you're on key. you feel freedom I want you to lift those hands I want you to prove hell wrong yeah you can come out of hurt still alive yes you can you're gonna have some scars you're gonna have some bruises but that's your story and don't you hide it your story will empower somebody else to come out come on come on come on come on in the spirit I can hear it Chains are falling. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the spirit, I can hear it. Chains are falling. In the spirit, I can hear it. Oh, cool. Chains are falling. In the spirit.
give him a shout of victory praise Hallelujah. look at what he's already done and he's not finished yet tell somebody next to you as you head back to your seat he's not finished yet he's not finished yet as you head back to your seat look at one more person and tell him he's not finished yet Hallelujah. Can we thank Sister Vani Lopez for being so transparent, so real. We got our packing peanuts and our duct tape and our cardboard boxes. Uh -huh. And we're moving out of Hertzville. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. What a wonder. What a wonder. What a marvel. The next anointed man of God that I have the privilege and honor of introducing is one who is very, very, very well acquainted with miracles. When we were putting this encounter, I don't like to call it a service or an event, this encounter, this divine appointment, when we were putting that before the Lord as a team and we were surveying who out there among gospel preachers still believes in miracles, the list was short. <laughs> Sad to say, the list was very short. But Pastor William McDowell not only believes in miracles, but sees God perform miracles each and every time he mounts a pulpit. Whether he's preaching or teaching or singing, worshiping, praising in his home church or around the world, miracles manifest in such unique ways. And we're so honored and privileged and proud to have him with us tonight for Be Made Whole. Would you welcome Pastor William McDowell? Well, I've been praying for this since the moment that the assignment was given. I would say invitation, but truthfully, um, I received more invitations than I can accept. And so it has to be an assignment of the Lord that we go where we go. And um, you can sit down for just a moment. I. Uh, I know that we just came out of a, a very high atmosphere and the Lord is in this room. And, and, I, and I know that we're used to probably one of the most amazing organists in the whole country, Wendell, providing a... Yeah. I'll be honest, the musician in me is distracted, <laughs> but the preacher in me knows the gift. And <laughs> I don't know what that was, but all right. Um, every time I step into an atmosphere, particularly one that's prophetically pregnant and one that God is predetermined to move in. I don't predetermine what I'm going to say before I get there because we, we've got too many people the, the scripture lets us know that on the river of God no mighty ship with oars shall pass which actually means that if you're going to be on the river of God you have to throw away your oars and put up your sails and let him take you where he wants you what he wants you to be and so I was on my way here and as we were landing in the city and I'm so grateful 
to this great, amazing man of God and, and friend to many, Pastor Rob. It's good to show honor. It's good to show honor. I don't want us to take this treasure for granted because he is a treasure, a prophetic and apostolic truth for a generation modeling something that a generation is losing but will not be lost because of what he's modeling. Amen. Pastor, I felt something a few years ago happened to me and I didn't know what it was. Now, today, I know what it is, um, but I didn't know what it was then. And, and I want to, um, you can play in the key of F sharp, by the way, that would help. Um, and so um, what, what happened to me a few years ago, and, and I planned on saying some other stuff, but the Lord is doing something significant. I'm just, I'm just walking in it for a moment. I know my cadence is a little bit slower than that, but this is what happens when I sense that he's in the room. So I was in a city, Pastor, and um, we were there to do a night of worship. And uh, the team was with me, and people had actually paid. And I, you know, they bought tickets to come to this night of worship. And so we started out in this night of worship, and you can bring the keys down just a little bit in the monitors while I'm talking. It'll help me better when I'm singing. Um, and so, so they, they just, they're like, okay, you know, you sing your songs. And I was on the first song and we're praising God and on the second song and we're praising God. And the third song came. And when the third song came, I started looking around like this during the third song. And I didn't know what was going on at the time I just kept looking and looking and looking because I felt on on my body this intense heat like like a I can't really describe it to you um it, it it's like a fire but it's not really burning my skin but it's just very very intense and I was feeling this intense heat and so at the time I was thinking perhaps I'm standing under a light or near a light fixture or something like that because if you've ever been up on a platform where they have lights and things like that, if the, if the lights aren't far away, they get really hot really fast. And so I was thinking I'm, 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 I must be near a light or something and I kept looking and actually Clay was there and he was on the keys and so I'm, I'm singing during the song and I'm looking around and he's like, what's the matter, what's wrong? And I'm like, I feel this heat on me, like it's, it's, it's something like, am I by a light or something? He's like, no. And so I stood there for a moment and I recognized at that moment that, that the Lord was standing there. And I felt this incredible presence of God in a way that I had never felt him before. And, 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 and this story is, is both amazing and tragic at the same time. I'll get there. Um, um, I, I literally, I, the, at the time, Pastor, that was when, when miracles at first started breaking out in our ministry. And so at, at a... At a you know, pretty high velocity. It's, it's amazing to stand on this platform because it was uh, being in this church over 20 years ago that I saw my first miracle. Wow. R.W. Shambach stood here and prayed for a blind boy who immediately received his sight right about where I'm standing. <laughs> and and, I, I, and the boy was healed instantly. And Pastor Rod said, still healed. Hallelujah. Uh-oh. I think I might have detected a little low expectation in the room. Every time a testimony is given of what God is doing, that's an opportunity for you to give him praise. I thought this might be the one last place in America where we don't have to talk about low expectation. Everywhere else, people are dealing with low expectation, but there is a place. Hallelujah. 
So I'm just going to give you a warning now. Every single time you, you have uh, or you hear a testimony, that's an opportunity for you because how you respond to the word of the Lord determines your experience. I can prove it to you in scripture over and over, but how you respond to the word of the Lord determines what you will see. If Elisha says that by tomorrow, at this time, everything in the economy is going to be back to normal, and you are the king's attendant, and you say that can't happen, even if God opened the windows of heaven, Elisha might look back at you and say, oh, it's going to happen. It's just not going to happen for you. You're going to see it with your eyes, but you won't walk into it. How you respond to the word of the Lord determines your experience. And every time a testimony is told, it creates faith for the future. And oh, by the way, the future is now. We don't serve a God who's confound, confined by the limitations of time. Before Abraham was, I am. That's not what I came to say, but just I want you to know that, that, that for those of you who are believing that God is going to one day, someday do something, you've missed a few moments already. Your one day, someday is today. Hallelujah. There is no chronology to your miracle. It is now. tell my testimony I'm standing there and the miraculous had just first started to break out and so I I just sensed that the Lord wanted to do something because specifically that heat that I was feeling was was on my back and so I said um because it, it was the paid concert and I wasn't brought there to do that um I, I thought to myself well you know, just out of respect for authority in the room, let me just ask, is it okay if I pray for people who, who may be sick because I'm feeling at least that the Lord wants to heal people who have back issues? And so at that time, uh, I, asked, I asked the question, I said, is, who's the person here at this church with the authority to, to release me to go ahead and pray for these people? And so um, the, the, the daughters of the pastor were there, and so they said, go ahead. And so I started out and I said, well, if you are a, a person in here and you're dealing with back issue, uh, run up here now. The Lord wants to heal you. And I started to tell the testimonies of how the Lord had been healing people. And, and so faith was rising in the room. It was great. Amen. But I said... This has a good thing, and it also is part tragedy, too, because, because what happened in that moment was something that I believe all of us need to recognize in this moment. If we're going to receive from the Lord, we need to recognize this in this moment, because the power of the Lord is present to heal now. He's present to heal right now. Pastor, one of the most tragic things happened in that moment. Um, the people came forward to be prayed for, and I'm feeling this, this heat on me. And, and so right as I was getting ready to pray for them, somebody passed me a note, and the note said, you are not allowed to pray for these people because the bishop is not here. And let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. When I read the note and the note said, you are not allowed to pray for these people, the heat left. It broke my heart because as a worshiper and one who has pursued the presence of God my entire life, I've been saved my entire life entire life. God has set me apart for him for my entire life. My earliest memory of life is telling my grandfather I'm saved but my parents don't believe me. That's my earliest memory of life. My only memory of him before he died and my earliest memory of life. The first words that I can ever remember saying out of my mouth is I'm saved. Yeah. 
so I've been pursuing the presence of God my entire life, but for the first time in my life, that was the first time, Pastor, I ever felt the Lord withdraw because he was rejected. And I'm gonna just tell you right now, that's happening in churches all across America. Right now, he, 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 he's being rejected, so he's coming into moments to fill them, but people are saying, we'll take it from here. And pastor almost got sued. You know what? Because when he left, I stopped because I thought to myself, what am I going to do if he's not here? And I know that they paid me money and gave me a contract and said, you're supposed to sing for this long. But I'm like, he left. So if he's not here, I can't do anything. So I stopped the concert after the third song and went home. Pastor, I, I went back to the hotel room and I wept. I called my friend Caleb, he's sitting on the front row now. I was crying. And I just said, I just felt him withdraw. I've never felt that before. And then I said to the Lord, God, whatever it was that you wanted to do there, please do with me. Because I won't reject you. And I cried for two days. And I kept saying the same thing over and over. Whatever it was that you wanted to do there, Please do it with us. I started praying for our church because we won't reject you. We won't reject you. And I'm weeping now because there's so many people that the Lord wants to touch, that he wants to be with. But people who with their own agenda, their own time, their own convenience, their own whatever, they're rejecting him. And I said, God, please. Whatever it was that you wanted to do there, please do it here, because we won't reject you. I woke up early Sunday morning to pray like I always do, and weeping again, asking the Lord, please show up. Please, we won't reject you. And I started driving in my car, and almost to church, and I felt him get in the car. I walked in the church, and worship is happening. I'm sitting there, and I have my hands lifted, and that strong presence of God, that heat comes on me again. And This time, I was trying to explain to one of our other pastors what it's like. And so I went over to walk over to him, pastor, and everybody between me and him fell out under the power of God as I walked by. And I was trying to explain it because it's not a contact heat. My hands are cold right now. It's not a contact heat, but if you're near me when it's happening, you can feel it. Almost like it's a space heater. Here's the amazing part about the goodness of God. I got some emails after that concert where they told me I couldn't pray for the people. The three people who were standing closest to me all got healed. (laughs) 
Why did I tell you that? Why did I tell you that? You're still watching online for hours. You're, you're here in this room because as we started to land, what I've discovered since then is that the Lord will begin to do that. Um, it's not the only thing he does. Sometimes he speaks by word of knowledge. Sometimes he just does things in the room that we're not aware of. But, but as we were landing into the city, he began to confirm because I've been praying this entire time from the moment I accepted this assignment until now that the Lord would show up. And he doesn't have to be so gracious as to give us a sign. <laughs> he doesn't have to. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he does. And as we were landing, the Lord just began to heat up different areas of my body. And he's been doing that this entire time. Would you lift up your hands in this moment? There is a person in the room with the curvature of the spine that the Lord is healing. I don't know who you are or where you are, but the Lord is healing you. There's a person with the issue with your right ear. The Lord is healing that right now. By the way, he reveals to heal. The Lord doesn't reveal just to let you know that he knows what you have. He reveals it to heal it. There's somebody else you've been dealing with the pain in your lower right leg. The Lord is healing that right now. He's, he's, he's been doing that. There's somebody else you've been dealing with an issue in your neck. The Lord is healing that. He's healing that right now. The power of the Lord is in this room right now. He is moving in this room because I need you to know the kind of season that we are in. We are in a so that season. God is showing himself in this moment because he needs to demonstrate to a generation again that not only does he have the power to heal but he has the power to save so he's doing some things right now in this generation in order to prove that the power of the invisible kingdom is more real than the power of the visible kingdom and so God is moving in this room right now somebody who has an issue with your kidneys the Lord is healing you right now the Lord is healing that issue right now in fact not only is it something you've been going to the doctor for but it's a pain that he's taken away somebody else I think it's your your collarbone your right collarbone the Lord is doing that he's healing that right now he's taking away pains and he's healing bodies right now if I were you I'd receive it because he's doing more than I'm calling out he's doing more than I'm calling out the presence of the master our Savior Jesus is in this room right now and he's touching bodies and he's healing people all across this room and if I were you if you're one of those people that that just got healed or your pain just went away you might want to run down just so the others can know that he's moving in this room he's moving in this room hear me clearly hear me clearly I recognize that a number of people out of, because of your faith, I'm not saying that we won't pray for you, but I'm saying if you're a person who God has already touched, make, make your way down here. If you're a person the Lord has already touched, I'm not telling you that we won't pray for those who are believing for a touch, but if you're one who you know that God is touching you right now, we need to have a moment where we just are able to give God glory for what he's already doing in the room. Because I tell you, if you'll give him glory for what he's doing, you will release an atmosphere sphere where he will do more he will do more he will do more he will do more there's a person you've had an unknown pain in the back of the the head area it's like uh, just the back of your head it's been an unknown pain the Lord is touching that right now I don't know who you are or where you are but the Lord is touching that right now there's somebody else who's been dealing with chronic migraines the Lord is healing you right now he's touching you right now in this room he's touching you he's touching you thank you Jesus in Luke chapter 5 Verse 17, 
Because I need you to understand the kind of power that's in this room. Jesus was in a house teaching when the Bible says that there were a number of people who were around him, including the Pharisees who wanted to trap him. In other words, he was not only in the presence of believers, but he was in the presence of skeptics. Mm. Jesus heals not only in the presence of believers, but he also heals in the presence of skeptics. I want to say that again because for some of you, you think that you have to come here in order to get a healing. But I want you to know that we're in a season where the Lord is using people all over. He doesn't just heal in the atmosphere of faith alone. He also heals in the atmosphere or the presence of skeptics. I want you to know that unbelief is not the kryptonite to Jesus. Now, I, I know that you think that, oh, if we don't have faith, he can't do anything. No, no, no. The reason why he doesn't do it is because he knows that if he does it, it won't change your perception of who he is. But unbelief does not have an effect on his power. It just has an effect on your ability to receive. His power remains unchanged. <laughs> Pastor, I know that you know the scripture backwards and forwards. So I'm not saying this for your benefit. I'm saying it for everyone else. The Bible says that the power of the Lord was present with Jesus to heal. Luke chapter 5. The power of the Lord was present with Jesus to heal. And the house was full. And so there were some men who had a friend that was paralyzed. And they... They saw that the house was full, which also lets us know that you can be there but not encounter him. It's a whole lot of people that come to church but leave without an encounter because there's a difference between being in the crowd and having an encounter. And so, because they were desperate and they couldn't get their friend to Jesus, they took him up the side of the roof, side of the house, to the roof, cut a hole in the roof, lowered their friend into the presence of Jesus. And catch this, the Bible says, doesn't say anything about the man's faith. It says seeing their faith. That's very important for what we're about to do for these 300,000 needs that are down here. It says seeing their faith. Jesus looked at the man and he said, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees who were sitting there thought to themselves, who does this man think he is that he can forgive sins? And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said this, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or rise, take up your bed and walk. Watch this. This is the season that we're in. But so that, somebody say, so that. I understand we have a whole lot of people that think the miracles are not for today, but I need you to understand something. But so that you will know that the Son of Man has the power on the earth to forgive sins. He looks at him and he says, rise, take up your bed and walk. He heals the man to prove his validity for salvation. I think you missed it right there. I think you missed it right there. This is the problem with the powerless gospel. We're trying to tell people that you can get to heaven, but with no demonstration on the earth. How is it that we're supposed to have confidence that you can do something in eternity and say that there's power in eternity, but it doesn't have the ability to happen here? But we are in a so that season. God is doing some things in this generation so that they will know that he has the power to save. It's amazing, Pastor, to me. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me that 2,000 years ago, they didn't question his ability to heal. They questioned his ability to save. 2,000 years later, Nobody questions his ability to save, but everybody questions his ability to heal. But the two things are connected. They are connected. They are connected. They are connected. I'm telling you now, when people roll up into our church in a wheelchair and walk out, it's not just for them. It's for everybody that's connected to them. When people come in and they can't hear, but they leave being able to hear, it's not just for them. It's for everybody that's connected to them.
doing all of this to stir your faith. This great man of God walked in here declaring with authority, but some of us missed it because we're so used to watching people work. And so we're like, oh, this, watch him work. Watch him work. Did you know that God was moving? You can miss it. I've discovered that a lot of times we're flowing a word of knowledge and word of wisdom. People are offended because their sickness wasn't called out. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. If Jesus is in the room for one, he's in the room for all. When the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment, he wasn't on his way to her. He was on his way to deal with somebody else's need, but when the healer arose, healing was available, and she said, this is my moment, because if he's going to heal somebody else, I'm going to take the moment to grab it for myself. We just called out some things. The question is, how desperate are you to touch the hem of his garment and grab it for yourself? You are leaving this room whole. This would be a good place to lift your hands and worship right here. This would be a good place to do that. While you're worshiping, you're going to be healed. While you're worshiping, you're going to be touched. While you're giving him glory, that pain is about to leave. While you're giving him glory, that arthritic condition is about to leave. While you're giving him honor, rheumatoid arthritis just got healed. While you're doing it, while you're doing it, while you're doing it, he's doing it in the room right now. He's doing it in the room right now. He's doing it. In in the room, in his presence. Jesus, touch your people now by the power of your Holy Spirit. Touch your people now by the power of your Holy Spirit. Touch your people now by the power of your Holy Spirit. There is a wave of glory that's about to flow throughout this room. There's a wave of glory that's about to flow throughout this room. Many are leaving here healed tonight. In their body, many are leaving here tonight healed in their body. Many are leaving. Your pain is leaving. We command pain to go in the name of Jesus. We command chronic pain to go in the name of Jesus. We command hereditary sickness and disease. You've accepted the fact that it has to come on you because your mama had it and your grandmama had it. But we... We bind that thing in the name of Jesus and we command it to go. Diabetes must go. Blood conditions must go. Arthritis must go. Gout must go. Rheumatoid arthritis must go. In the name of Jesus, we command sickness to go in Jesus' name. Limitations in the ligaments, we command to be healed in the name of Jesus. No more restriction. Rotator cuffs be healed in the name of Jesus. No more restriction. Your ligaments be repaired now in the mighty presence of the Lord. Some of you are waiting for a moment to come to you, but if you begin to do the thing that you could not do, instead of hoping that it goes, you can know that it's gone. Just move that thing that you've been unable to move. Do that thing that you've been unable to do. You are in an atmosphere of an open heaven, and the Spirit of God is moving among His people now. Remaso, 
Come on, lift up your hands, lift up your hands, Father. Shama robo so remantana monso teleke shetalala monso reanda lili lili osoba. Lord, touch your people now. Mm. Sing that is a great expect, holy expect. There is a holy expectation. And it's rising in the room with great anticipation. We know our God will move. All oh, faith is rising, hearts are burning as you're drawing near. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Sweeping in the room. Yeah. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Sweeping in the room There's a holy expectation And it's rising in the room With great anticipation oh, oh, oh. This room. We know Rising hearts are burning as you're drawing near. Oh, we say, Here comes the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory. atmosphere. Come on, say, here comes the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory of the Lord. You are prophesying your reality here. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Sweeping in the room. Come on, say it right here. Say it again. Here comes the glory. Somebody lift up your worship right here in this room. Somebody lift up your voice and lift up your worship in this room. Shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? He's the Lord strong and mighty. He's the Lord mighty in battle. And he's here. And he's here. And he's here. Say, say, here comes heaven. Here comes heaven. Somebody declare in this room. Come on, say. Say, here comes heaven. Here comes heaven. Here comes heaven. Here comes heaven. Everything we 
Say this, say, say, heaven is here, say, heaven is here right now, heaven is here right now, what we long to see, it is happening, happening here right now, heaven is here, here comes heaven. So, Pastor McDowell. The very first thing that you called out, and then the thing after that, and the thing after that, and the thing after that, this is Caleb and this is Kristen. Everything. Every single thing you called out, they both suffer from. For four years, they've both been experiencing chronic neck pain because of an accident they were both involved in. The very first thing you called out was curvature of a spine. Just nine months ago, Caleb was diagnosed with curvature of the spine and has been in chronic pain. What else did he call out? Right ear. Yeah, right ear. Pain in your right ear. Yeah. Unexplained right ear. Pain in the head. Unexplained pain in yeah. the head. Every, I, I came and uh, because Kristen had texted me earlier in the service and she said, as soon as I walked in the room, the devil attacked me with a migraine and I've been experiencing migraines my entire life. And she said, tonight's my night. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be free. So when I walked over to her, I said, okay, so did God heal you of your migraine? And she said, no, not just that. And she started listing off every single thing that you had called out and said every bit of every symptom and pain is gone. We're healed. No more pain. Hallelujah. Pastor. 
Pastor William, this is no coincidence. Miss Gail from Dayton, Ohio came forward. I was on the opposite side for Miss Ashton. We didn't even talk about this. I've never met Miss Gail. For 50 years, she's dealt with pain in the curvature of her spine. For 55 years, she's dealt with migraine headaches. She came in tonight with a migraine. When you spoke that, it immediately felt the heat and went gone. Immediately felt the heat down her back. She couldn't do this right here. She couldn't do that without pain, pain free tonight. Somebody give Jesus praise in this room. Somebody give Jesus all the glory. Heaven is here. Heaven is here right now. Heaven is here right now. What we long to It's happening. Pastor, this is Daniel Bangura. He is a graduate of Harvest Preparatory School and was a, a record-breaking, record-winning running back. And when he went to college to play football, as yeah, soon this this young man, this young man, who lives for God with all his heart, mind, soul, and strength, was the number one leading running back in rushing yards his junior year and his senior year in the nation regardless of size of high school number one two years in a row in the nation but then on his way to promise yes sir on his way to promise in one of the very first practices of his new college football career he received an injury in his right foot and has since been unable to play and has for two years been experiencing pain in that right foot. And he said, tonight, it's gone. This is Reverend Audrey from Pennsylvania. She's been coming here for more than 30 years. She's 20 years, sorry. Yes. Verona, Pennsylvania. Verona, Pennsylvania. And you've been coming here for 30 years? I found my 1999 breakthrough card a couple of days ago. 1999 breakthrough card. She's still got in her purse. 1999. How many of you were not alive in 1999? That's what I thought. We love you. What happened? She, she had a bone spur in the back of her skull that she was about to have to have surgery for, constant pain. They were, would, 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 they were giving her shots in the back of her skull. Tonight, she felt that heat and immediately the pain. Heat. Felt that heat, Pastor. Why don't you receive it right now? Why don't you receive it? Oh. Will you be made whole? Just receive it. Just receive it. It's your only job. Just receive it. Put your hand on your body wherever you have pain or sickness. Put it on your temples if you have difficulty. Miss Bonnie. She ministered so powerfully to the soulless part of us. Some of you have been too long nursing your pain. Get rid of it. Shake it off tonight. Throw it off tonight. Yeah, 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 Determine yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not living there anymore. Right, right. You don't have to live there. Right, right. Elder Canfield, what's happening over there? Pastor Parsley, Pastor McDowell, this is Deborah. For two years ago, she received a diagnosis of a blood disorder called PV. And she's been suffering with it ever since then. But tonight, she felt the heat of God going through her body. And she believes that she's received her healing. 
touch. Somebody give God glory. No spectators. Come on. Come on, World Harvest. No spectators. Only participating praisers. Don't stop praising him. Don't stop lifting it up. Don't stop glorifying him. Plead the blood. Curse every spirit but the Holy Spirit. You're as important as anybody on this platform to the atmosphere of expectancy. Elder Chad, what's going on? Pastor, this is Jamila. She's from Columbus, Ohio. She's here with some friends and came in. You called out legs healing and her right leg was swollen, double the size of her other one. She didn't feel heat, but she felt a pop. Look down, it was back to normal, so she ran straight up here. Y'all just stand there if you want to. I'm about to take myself a run. The gospel never changed. What's going on, Blair? Pastor. You know this precious woman. She's been a part of our church for I've years I've been knowing her since I was years. 12 years old. <laughs> yes, sir. And tonight, Pastor McDowell called out pain in a right leg. Yeah. And she said that she felt the healing power of God come into her leg. I said, is there anything you can do now that you couldn't do before? And show them what you did. And Everybody she went, she went to dancing over here. She went to dancing. Don't just clap like somebody scored a basket. Praise him like he's God. Somebody leap, somebody shout, somebody wave. Somebody dance, somebody spin. My God, what's happening, Elder? Pastor, this is our good friend, Pastor Joshua Lucio from Lubbock, Texas. Lubbock. He's been dealing with chronic back pain for about two months. In fact, on his way here, as soon as he got off the airplane, he went to the chiropractor, didn't help, was still in pain, and tonight it was an immediate shock, and God healed him, no pain. Pastor Parsley, Pastor McDowell, this is Terrell. This is his second time at World Harvest Church. He's from Port Clinton, Ohio. Yeah. Three months ago, he received the diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension. He's had pain in his chest ever since then until tonight. The pain is all gone. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Somebody give Jesus the praise in this room. Somebody give Jesus the praise in this room. What's going on? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. You as well. You as well. Tell everybody your name. Tanisha Rubens. She's been a part of this church for years and years as well. And Pastor McDowell called out what? Kidney infection. And you'd, Kidney infection. And you'd been feeling horrible pain for how long? I've actually been dealing with it for about three months and I didn't know until I had gone to the ER twice in a row and I said something is wrong something is wrong and so I had been flushing with water and just flushing and finally they gave me a prescription so I'm halfway through that now but tonight oh it's done it is done I am healed I am healed I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord He's had pain in his kidneys too, but tonight 
everything changed as a result of the power of God at work in his life. Are you tired of blessing him? Are you tired of blessing his name? Bless his name! We bless the name I need you to shout all the way back to your seat. No, I said I need you to shout. a moment for God to complete your deliverance, your healing, your breakthrough, your miracle. God wants to do a permanent work in your life now.